Hi, everyone. Today is day four of World FTD Awareness Week. We're halfway through this global week of action to end FTD. All week, I'm sharing great interviews on different aspects of FTD and sharing actions you can take to help advance a future free of FTD. The theme for today focuses on volunteering, focused on ways you can take action by working with an FTD or dementia-focused organization in your part of the world. If you can't find one near you, it can also be effective to take a simple action on your own to raise awareness of this disease. Today, I'm excited to be speaking with two sisters, Diana Lauren gonzalez Moret and Sandra gonzalez Moret, who are doing so much in different ways. Together, they are taking action, getting the FTD story out there, and make a difference in the lives of others impacted by this devastating form of dementia. Diana is a wonderful storyteller and actor who powerfully chronicles this journey in a beautiful short film that I hope more of you will be able to see soon, Un Pedacito de Carne. And her sister, Sandra, who serves as an AFTD ambassador in Northern New Jersey, where the family lives, has done so much to raise awareness and educate the public since she began volunteering with AFTD. Diana, I am so, and Sandra, I am so happy to welcome you guys. Thank you so much for being on. Thank you so much for having us and um, for, for the space to, to talk with you. We're so happy and excited. I'm yeah, sure. we're really excited too. So I want to get into this um, and ask about your mom, Diana's journey. Um, you know, what, what were like the first signs that, you know, you guys were kind of scratching your head, you know, thinking that something was different. Can you just get into what that looked like and how it presented? Yeah, definitely. Well, our mom is amazing and uh, pre-diagnosis was just like so joyous and gregarious and, um, you know, everybody, she was kind of famous for her hugs. She'd like give you these big hugs that would melt away all of your worries and accept you just the way you are. Um, so, and she was incredibly charming and loving and yeah, she was so charming. So I was living at home um, and you know, looking back, I can see how things changed or things sort of, it was very subtle, especially in the beginning. She would stay in bed longer. Um, her spatial awareness changed when she would be driving. She wouldn't stay in the lines per se, or she would um, she would see a stop sign or, or a red light or stop sign like way ahead and she just stopped driving and we'd be just crawling to the stop sign or we'd be online at the supermarket and she would like be right behind the person like breasts like big boobs to somebody's <laughs> back and it was just really awkward um, and then I would come home and there'd be food that was half cooked so raw pasta uh, not uh, very al dente pasta like way too al dente pasta um and raw chicken and it was just it was just weird but it could be explained away she's tired um my mom is mexican she's from, from mexico so maybe just a cultural difference and standing so close to somebody um so I, a lot of the things could be explained away in the yeah. beginning and then i while sandra was in jersey with my mom i was in california in grad school at the time so for me the changes felt so much bigger so, um, I, you know, she'd hang up the phone on me and we were like best friends. We'd talk multiple times a day. So I'd be like, what did I do wrong? And then when I came home, I would see massive changes. Like she'd start talking about deer that were attacking the house or, um, or she'd be carrying a doll around more often or yeah, she just had all these big, big changes. So then one time when I came home for Christmas break, I was like, I, there's, this is something, something is going on here. So I was like, I'm only here for a little time. Let me just take her to the ER and say it's for like, um, she was complaining about her back at the time. I'm like, let me see if we can get some answers or get some tests done. And I went in and she was roaming the halls and um, wouldn't want to sit still or was like rummaging through all the foods in the closet and like stealing stuff. And, uh, and so I think that the hospital at the time was like, wanted her out of there. So they were just like, you know, she just has depression, just give her Prozac. And that was... That was what she told us. And after that, my dad was also had the same feeling. So he brought her to the primary caregiver, uh, primary um, physician, not caregiver. <laughs> the words that stick in your mind, right? <laughs> um, and then he brought her as well to the doctor and again, depression. And then, and then it was my turn. So the big thing that happened that was finally the last straw was 
it was International Women's Day of 2017. I remember very well. I was wearing all red. And I called my mom on my lunch break and said, Mom, I'm going to invite you to dinner to our favorite restaurant. See you at six. Mm -hmm. And I got to the restaurant. She's not there. She's not there. I'm waiting. I don't know where to go. Finally, she shows up at home. She had left her cell phone somewhere. And I called her doctor the next day, made an appointment, asked to speak to the doctor. The doctor called me back. And said, and I told her, listen, um, something's not right. Like this is, there's something seriously wrong with mom. I need you to take a second look at her. I told her we're going for a UTI, but there's something seriously wrong. So she asked, told me two things. One was, Sandra, is your father abusing your mother? And I said, no, I see no signs of abuse. But I'm telling you, that's the symptom. Like she's not talking. She doesn't want to speak for herself. Mm -hmm. And two. She said, well, Sandra, and this is like ingrained in my head, Sandra, you just have to accept that your mother's given up on life. Oh. Yeah. And I said, nope, I don't accept that. Can we keep the appointment or do I need to go somewhere else? And this, um, was, this was the primary care doctor? Primary care doctor who she had been seeing for many, many years. Oh. So she said, yeah, come bring her in. And she changed her tune pretty quickly. I, I wrote down a sheet, like a long sheet of paper, of all these different symptoms. Uh, mom went to the bathroom to, you know, to get her urine sample done. And she came back and the doctor said, you know, said, Diane, I think you have dementia. Do you know what that is? And that's how it all started. Three days, four days later, we had the diagnosis of Pick's disease is what they were, what they told us initially. And that's how the whole journey started and then we finally had a name in uh, april 2017 she got her official diagnosis with, with the behavioral variant after we found out about behavioral variant mm -hmm. okay so i know pick's disease was what they were calling it back then and now they call it ftd so when did they when did they switch from calling it picks do you know to ftd i feel like it was around that time that i feel like obviously the aftd had existed already so they were calling it ftd but yeah. i feel like I think it was in the 90s. I think Pick's disease was like the word they used in the 90s, maybe early 2000s. And then it's just been changing. You know, it's just now it's FTD, which really, yeah. encapsulates all that it encapsulates, which we can go into, but I don't think you want to go into it. <laughs> yeah, what well, it's what a journey for you guys, you know, um, and that's such a common story unfortunately of like how long it takes just for someone even to like take you seriously or you know you're going into doctor's offices and being like hi like something is going on and no one no one is listening to you it's just that I, I just can't believe how common that yeah. story is you know and my hope yeah. is that with us talking and raising awareness that that you know that that changes Definitely, and for sure. Because having to also tell so many doctors what FTD is is also, you know, it's crazy making. Like, you know. Yeah. No, that will take the wind out of your sails for sure, and it's so disheartening when you have to be explaining to a doctor what FTD is. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so you guys are care partners to your mother, and you know how has that journey been for you guys? You know how is it? changed you where are the challenges like what does that look like for the two of you I will say mom is mom is you know towards the end of this journey and I feel her love and I know that she feels my love so just that that relationship is still there for sure um and it was it just changed the family dynamics it just slowly changed the family dynamics um you know, mom was the person who took care of all the finances. And all of a sudden we all had to be like, ah, you know, my mom was a whiz. Like, how do we like figure all this out? Um, so family dynamics changed. Um, I, I mean, I changed, I changed in, I feel like I'm more patient when I need to be patient, but I'm also better at my boundaries when I'm like, I'm done, or this is not my problem. Um, and I think just being around the disease really honed in on the fact that I really, people's opinions don't matter. Um, you know, just being around mom's behavioral weird things 
where initially I'd be like, ooh, like I'd be a little embarrassed. And you know what? Who cares if she's not hurting anybody or, you know, mm-hmm. then let her be. You know, we're all, we all need to just embrace our, our weirdness. So mm-hmm. that's how I yeah that's how I think I've changed and right yeah yeah I, the the role reversal is so tough um and uh it was in the especially in the beginning it was very very hard for me to to accept it and to be grounded um it was it I mean it continues to be hard it's not like all of a sudden bloop, it's, it's better because but it's challenging especially with the anticipatory grief and the like ambiguous grief um that I think that that's the 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 positive way that I've learned is I've learned to manage these very massive emotions, like huge emotions that, you know, I've learned to emotionally regulate and be able to be a bit more present with people, but also know when I need to, to when I don't have capacity anymore and I need to step away. Um, and, I, and I think that this journey has really helped me with that. I think also having a closer relationship with like, myself has allowed me to sense a lot more of what my mom might not be able to express anymore so that kind of deep deep like that unspoken language that you know we all can't really put our finger on and science can't either that that knowledge and that knowing I've grown a little bit more in um and I think as a family like you know my sister my myself and my father we all work as a team and you know we're like every family like we get in fights and things For like sure. that but I think we've had to learn to put our egos aside and really put what matters first and work together and get through those arguments and blah, put it all on the table and, uh, you know, forgive and, and continue on and and love each other a lot. And I think that, you know, that that's been the biggest growth. And I could say that our mom did that for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I hear that a lot as well from others. I mean, it's really incredible what I mean, we know that this is a horrible disease, but what it does, I know what it's done for me in the sense of like, just being able to rise to the occasion. And I think it's turned me into a much more patient, loving, caring, I mean, not like I wasn't before, but I really think this takes you to a whole other level, you know? Um, So that's kind of like the blessing and the curse of this disease you know um I don't know it's it's definitely changed me I would I would say for the better same 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 for the better and yeah yeah sometimes it's hard to admit that I have to say Uh, right I don't want to go through it I don't want other people to go through it but you know yeah Okay, so I want to get into talking about the movie, which I got to see and I loved so much. Um, So I want to know about just like the process and the thoughts behind it and getting it made and because that is such a big feat within itself. Um, I know like the industry somewhat and I know how difficult that can be just to get anything made. So I commend you guys and it was done so well. The, The story is so beautiful. I don't want to reveal, you guys get into it, I, but I just, I really absolutely loved it and was just like a sobbing mess <laughs> at the end of it. It was so beautiful. Thank you. That means so much. Um, well, I guess, I guess I'll go into a little bit of like what inspired the film first. Yeah. Um, so our mother was diagnosed in 2017, but of course we saw symptoms before that. And I was just in a state of despair, like you know, my mom was my, 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 you know, I talked about her hugs earlier, like after a show, I was, I'm an actor too. And I went to grad school for, for acting. So after my shows, usually throughout my whole childhood, she'd come and she'd give me a big hug. She's my biggest cheerleader to like an embarrassing way, which like, I'd be like a 20 year old woman. She was like, yeah, like clapping, like as if I was a kindergartner on stage, (laughs) you know? Um, so, uh, so I, I just, it was really hard to not have that cheerleader in that same way. And um, I had graduated from grad school. I thought I was about to like, you know, be all hot and stuff. And then I was just caught in this tidal wave of grief and despair and really didn't know what to do. And, you know, was in California, but wanted to be in Jersey with mom and would travel back and forth a ton and just felt so lost. And then I had a dream that my mom 
and I met in the clouds and uh, we, we, our thing was to go have tea and then go to the Met. And that was like our thing that we would do. So we were having tea in the clouds and she's looking fabulous. Um, and like her, you know, her French bun and um, she's laughing and smiling like she was pre-diagnosis. And um, she just says, listen, I want you to follow your dreams and that I love you. And I will always be here with you no matter what. And that's like the first time I have ever woken up from a dream. My tears woke me up like, and I just, it just, I felt so touched and so inspired in the first time, like where I felt hope, you know, and which I had not felt in a long time. And then I call my mom and I'm like, mom, I had this dream. And she goes, I know. I was like, what do you know? <laughs> She's like, yeah, we were in the clouds and we had tea and I told you, I love you and to follow your dreams. And I was there. <laughs> I was totally there. What? Yeah. 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 So my Sandra was witnessed. She was on the, she was on with my mom at the time. And I was like, that's exactly what happened. And mm -hmm. I just like, I, you, you can't really explain that again to the unexplainable, right? Like with this disease where everything feels so uncontrollable and so insane. And so insane is the wrong word. Um, so just impossible. And there's just so much, um, awfulness, mm -hmm. um, that to have that moment of hope and love, just to know that love is forever and love is eternal. And as much as if TD steals and steals and steals from our loved ones, that they can never take that love away, mm -hmm. that all of a sudden I felt that hope where I wanted to make sure that, you know, that FTD is a diagnosis, but it's not the end. And it's not the end for our loved ones. And it's not the end for us where I felt like I had to give up so much of my career and this and that if I wanted to be with my mom, because you, you know the industry, it's like, you're gonna be too old, you're gonna be this or that, or there's so many no's, where it's like, no, I wanna be with my mom. Like, I wanna be there during her challenging times and I wanna support her. So um, as a way, I feel like my mom inspired me to be creative again. And so I started writing down our story, writing down um, things that I would notice, because I also didn't wanna forget because I know that once I'm through this, I might forget a lot of the details that are really challenging and really hard. And I wanted to make sure that I'm spreading that awareness and using my time and like the talents I have to, to continue spreading the awareness. So anyway, that, that was a long story of how, what inspired the film. Um, but at the time I was um, working with my creative and producing partner, Akila A.K. Walker, and um, I, her and I would workshop the scripts. My mom came and lived with me in LA for a while. Her and I would write together. So my mom has been part of this process from beginning to end. Sure. She's part of us like writing the grant for, for Nalip. And um, that's the National Association of Latino Independent Producers, which had a Netflix sponsored program for um, women of color, filmmakers of women, emerging filmmakers of women of color. And we received the grant, which was amazing. You, you know how challenging it is for independent filmmakers to make a film. So to have like someone believe in you and to say, we know it takes an opportunity. Here's the opportunity and go for it. So we went for it. Um, we filmed actually here in, in our family, in the, where we care for our mom. Um, and, you know, we, we had to find respite care at the same time because- I was gonna ask, like, how did you manage to do, how did you manage to yeah. do that? We actually uh, applied to uh, Hilarity for Charities a respite oh. grant, and um, and also at the same time, my mom qualified for hospice, so we were able to to um, get respite care for that, which was challenging, but it was very rough. It was the <laughs> longest, like the filming, the three days. I don't think I've ever been so tired in my life. Yes, I it was my first film experience, and I I'm just in awe. Like I mean. Now I'm I'm looking at TV shows and I'm like, wow, that must have taken forever, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, but it was probably was like that extra added stress and anxiousness oh. because not only are you here making a movie, but also then you know, I'm calling, calling you're thinking of and looking you know, right. It was it was a lot. Yeah, we were worried about mom at the same time, and you know. So, and it was, and it's like, you know, I, at that point I was her, I was her day to day, like everyday care partner and caregiver. So I was here and here with her all the time. So it was weird to be away and then weird to be back in this world where, you know, it felt like, I felt like a, a fraud in some ways, you know, that, you know, but anyway, um, so, and uh, Akila, who, who was my producing partner, she directed, cause when we were in LA, she got to really witness and she helped me. That's why I think like, 
you know, this, the theme is volunteer, but like volunteering can really just be a friend just saying, you know what, I'll work with you while you care give, or I'll work with you and spend time with you. Like just a little as that is makes such a huge impact on us, like, and, and on me. And so I knew she was the perfect person to direct the film because she witnessed it and she was a part of it. And she had that connection with our family. And so then we um, shot for three days here in New Jersey. Um, and then um, from there premiered at La Leaf, the, the Latino, um, Los Angeles Latino International Film Festival, which was amazing. Um, Cause- When was that? When did it premiere? It premiered um, in June. So oh, in June, okay. Yeah, oh, recently. Was, really recent, really recent. Yeah, so we're we're doing the festival run now, um, and our and our goal is what's amazing is we're we're partnering because Santa is an AFTD ambassador. So our goal is to always have you know you know at the festivals make sure that we're also sharing information and spreading awareness. Our other goal is to um, have a tour for colleges and for universities to have the film and um, you know be able to you know, do story circles or ways that other people can express their experiences or um, start conversations um, and learn more about FTD or uh, support caregivers and, and millennial caregivers as well. Um, so I feel like I went on a, on a different road, but. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. So is there any movement with it getting out there, like where everyone can see it. Like, and I know it was with Netflix, is this something that maybe we can see on Netflix at some point, like we hope, yeah. right? I hope so. So Netflix sponsored it, but um, you know, we don't have anything in conversation, but maybe they'll be inspired um, at some point. And of course, you know, it's a weird time in the industry now. I've been working on the feature, um, on developing the feature for it. So that's hopefully the goal is to, you know, broaden the stories, uh, expand the story more and um, to be able to kind of go into the whole journey um, to help understand more of the nuance of those symptoms that we talked about earlier that really can help people pinpoint something and see, oh, wow, which could hopefully slow, uh, speed up diagnosis. Cause we know once we had our diagnosis, things really changed for us. Yeah. Sure. Um, yeah. Um, okay. So Sandra, what was it like for you seeing this movie just being able to see the movie and like what did you notice when you were watching the movie like what were some of the feelings sort of surrounding it besides so I, besides that it's like so hard to like put together a movie well, what did you once you saw it together right well I was here for the actual filming so I got to see you know I got to see the actual filming of it but once it was done I went a couple months without wanting to watch it like mm -hmm. I didn't want to watch the different mm -hmm. variations. I wasn't ready. Yeah, I, we're in FTD world every day, <laughs> so just to see it. But uh, I have seen it numerous times, and I mean, it's just always going to be special for me because it encapsulates just a moment in time. Um, I, I mean, we're past that time uh, now, but I mean, it's always going to be recorded. Um, you know the 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 commode and the walker like that that's all moms like yeah. that's like in the live like I'm looking at where the scenes were you know it was all filmed here it was filmed in my office it was filmed um at your boyfriend's house I mean it was you know we just a family affair it was a family affair um but it's always going to be it's I mean it's just so special and I was really honored that my sister named the main character after me um inspired yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah yeah it's true and I think like also like what we wanted to share with the film was like yes it's about FTD but as a as like a caregiver especially with FTD it hits people you know it hit my mom at the prime of her adult life and it hit us at the prime of our young adults lives where we felt like our womanhood was also you know kind of stolen away from us where dating was like you know it's such a thing like you know it feels weird to date because you're like I have to also go home because I have to care for my mom or things like that so just wanting to share that story as well to make people feel less alone that you know sometimes you might make the wrong choice and that it's okay because there's I know there's a lot of guilt and shame from stepping away sometimes that come up so wanting to to explore that and also like the system, the system is like, I feel like I need to go to grad school just to understand our healthcare system and how to navigate it um, and to, to find the right support and to find the things that we qualify for, but then all that stuff. So all that piles up on top of the grief and on top of that hardship um, is, is what we wanted to look at. But in the end, our message is that 
that love again that 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 we that I found with my mom um is that that love and that wanting connection from each other is is uh what what can help get you through it mm-hmm. Um, okay, so Sandra, you talk about becoming a volunteer for AFTD. Well, no, you're an ambassador for AFTD. Um, what has it meant for you to be able to help others to better understand and navigate the FTD journey? Um, it's just, it's everything. I'm, this is my first year as an ambassador. I've been a volunteer for a couple of years, but um, it's been really interesting to just hear people's stories. I've gotten emails. Um, I've been able to speak to people. All the other ambassadors are wonderful, passionate people. The organization is just amazing. Everybody's really, really kind and comforting. And um, so it's a wonderful organization, but I really think that one, I've learned some lessons that I'd like to help other people. I have this image in my brain. I have like a lot of these images or, or things that, I don't know, get me through the day. And I don't know if this is from Catholic school or uh, I don't know where it came from, but I have this image of like the reason why we have two hands is one to get help. And then the other hand is to bring somebody up. So Mm -hmm. it's just that idea of (laughs) that idea of, um, yeah, I, I want to pay it forward because we've gotten help throughout the, throughout the whole journey. We're still on the journey. We're still figuring things out. Um, but I want to, be part of the I want to be part of the change I see in the world so this is this is my way of doing that and you're also a speaker Uh, yes and I and I speak Spanish so that's my like I want to really speak to the Spanish community um, Mm -hmm. get more people involved um, and learn more about it and um, yeah it's just it's just wonderful and again paying it forward and the AFTD had a meet and greet, um, I think the same year that mom was diagnosed, and it mm-hmm. totally changed the trajectory of our journey because we got to meet people in person, get recommendations. Um, so it's just my pleasure to, to yeah. help. It's so, it's, you know, so beneficial really to be able to either volunteer or to be able to be an ambassador because then you're really like on the ground, right? And being able to connect, which is just so important to be able to, like you said, like you just learn so much from other people. I know for me, it's like being able to connect with others that are on the journey, that have been on the journey, you know, um, has been, you can't put a price on that, you know? Um, what was the difference then between like what when you were a volunteer what were you doing as a volunteer and now that you're an ambassador like what are those two what does that look like on both sides well an ambassador is more of like a a senior I guess position Um, so I I have my own like email address with the AFTD and um, I'm just involved in I guess I just I guess I have more of a idea of what's coming in the pipeline with the mm-hmm. AFTD um, and I'm able to just be a connection between the the community and the organization um, and then a volunteer can do a number of things they can help with fundraising um, Diane and I are working on uh, a yoga fundraiser of yo- uh, doing yoga to fundraise for the AFTD um, a volunteer can help with the meet and greets or a table, uh, just at different functions. Um, yeah, there's just there, there's various ways to volunteer. And the secret of volunteering is you get out of it just as much as you put out. I mean, that's mm-hmm. like the that's the secret that you just you know you're helping people, but you also just get so much back. You you know so yeah for sure. So what would you say to others to encourage them to take action in the fight against FTD or any form of dementia? You want to take that one? Yeah, I think that, you know, if you're living, if it's it's a it's very personal to you, obviously, like what Sandra said, you'll get you'll get a lot. And I think vulnerability really breeds the ultimate connection. So the more space that you're able to connect with others and go to support groups or talk to people or even post on social media about awareness or things like that in whatever your lane is, 
Um, it'll make a, make you feel like you are putting something out there and that you're making an impact in some way, which, you know, when you can't control a lot, it makes you feel you can con at least control that. So obviously this is a disease that affects people in, well, any dementia, let's just do any dementia or any neurodegenerative disease is rough. So um, I think just overall, I feel like everybody's going to be a caregiver in some capacity, mm -hmm. whether uh, it's universal. it is universal and it's, and just having neurodegenerative disease, any disease, you can be part of that community. If I could snap, I would snap um, in a moment. Um, so we just need to be kinder and gentler and um, yeah, just bring about more more love in the world. I feel like I need to talk about my uh, my juggling. Oh yes, she has a great image. We love this image and the lobster. And the lobster. So this is for caregivers out there. So mm -hmm. one, I've got two sort of images that again, get me through the day. So one is juggling. So some of your balls are going to be be made out of glass. Some are plastic. Some are rubber. So you just need to identify which ones are. I've, I I really like this analogy. <laughs> <laughs> some of them are glass, which right now the glass ones in my life are my mom's health. A plastic that's very resilient with my relationship with my sister, it's pretty solid. But of course, I still need to take care of it. And then the rubber is again, the, I really don't care what you think <laughs> mentality or other people's opinions or yeah. So that's a rubber ball. So I'm constantly thinking about which ball I'm juggling or which balls I'm juggling, which ones I can put down so that I can focus more on the ones that are important, which are the glass and the plastic ones. So that's the juggling, the juggling thing. And then the other image that I think about a lot is um, a lobster. What's it's not Sebastian in the in the, um, the Little Mermaid? What's the lobster in the Little Mermaid? Do you know lobster? Sebastian? Isn't it Sebastian? Sebastian? I don't know. Oh. You. The lobster analogy. Here we go. So <laughs> this is this is what inspired this thought process of sometimes you are in the cold water, everything's great, you're you're loving it, but then somebody turns the burner on. So Luckily, we're not lobsters. We can jump out of that hot water, but we just need to recognize before we're cooked. Mm -hmm. So that's like my mentality of sometimes like the water's getting too hot and I need to look around and say, I don't want to, like, this is far enough. This is as far as I can go. It's time for me to, um, to ask for help, to figure things out, to take a what, break. Yeah. Raise the boundaries, up. like all of that. Correct. Yeah. So, okay. That's, I love you, those analogies. Those are great analogies. They helped yeah. me a lot. Yeah. I, especially, I especially love like the rubber balls. I want to yes. toss those out of here. Yeah. I need those. Yeah. They're just, they're just adding, they're just adding, they're just adding to the stress. Yeah. So, oh my gosh. I know. Well, I love speaking with you guys. This was so much fun. Thank you so much for bringing so much fun in the conversation. I am going to get into the calls of action for today. Great. So, okay, here we go. So the calls to action. If you are in the United States, a good option is to sign up to volunteer with AFTD. Uh, the sign up link is going to be at the bottom of this video. You can also sign up with any other great dementia focused organization around the world. If you don't know of an organization near you, one thing you can do is simply share your FTD story on social media. This is a powerful way to volunteer and raise awareness that you can take on your own. Be sure to use one of our campaign hashtags, which is end FTD, I care about FTD, or we care about FTD. Tell others about what you're doing on social media. If you visit AFTD's campaign page, you'll find messaging and graphics you can download and share. And all of that is gonna be linked at the bottom of this video. If you haven't already, we encourage you to change your profile picture on social, on social media. Just visit the AFTD's campaign page at the bottom of this video and follow the instructions to show the world you care about FTD. 
Diana and Sandra, thank you so much for coming on. I, like I said, I love this conversation. Um, I'm sorry that we're speaking under these terms because I actually feel like we would get along really well. So I, I hope one day we can see each other. It will be an in-person hug for sure. Yes, we're, we're, we love we love hugs. We, yeah, we love and, hugs. And Emma, thank you for your volunteerism. Yeah. This is wonderful, everything that you've been doing. Um, I know very well you don't have to do any of this. We don't have to do any of this. This mm -hmm. is it, right. So I really admire everything that you're doing. Um, I think it's just, I think it's just fantastic. And um, like I, I, I emailed you that that phrase, making your mess your message, and that's what we're doing yeah. here. So um, thank you, Robin Roberts, for that. <laughs> <laughs> random random I was like wow that's great yeah thank yeah. you so much Emma for everything and yeah we hope that we can inspire someone to volunteer or share your story um because sharing your story really helps spread awareness and is a form of volunteering yeah for sure absolutely thank you guys so much besitos Bye. besitos <laughs>